but your winner for the uh, just 2024. It's not 23, 24. It's just 20. Yeah, it's just 2024. Just the regular season. Regular season is is none other than myself. Congratulations to me. From worst to first, I'm wow. the winner. So wow. I just, I needed to put that out there for what was the me. what was the final standings just between the four of us, if you know. I I do have it written down. Final standings were okay, going into the final week, the final standings were. Drum roll, please. Dan Yacht. You got to say Dan Yacht's name. <laughs> yeah, you got it out of the way. We already way. know. <laughs> Hold on. Sam at 43 and 40. Alu at 44 and 39. Ryan at 47 and 36. And me at 49 and 34. Congrats, Joe. Hold on, that the was fact, going. That was before. That was before the final week. I'm sorry. That was before the final week. Oh, the shit. fact that I wasn't last. Wait, he, we're not done. We're not that done was, yet. That was before the final week. We all made our week uh, twelve picks, and that brought us to final standings of last place. Dan Yacht at two and eighteen. Second to last place, unfortunately. Cam Brock at five and five. Then we have <laughs> Ryan Anderson at six and three. What a then percentage. Have, huh? What we're a not percentage going, we're not going. We're going by overall correct. I'm pick. I'm just I'm just saying Ryan Anderson might might know what he's talking about. Uh yeah, he can feel very good about his performance, but he's still third to last. Uh we then have Zoom user at 15 and 6. Then that brings us to the core four. <laughs> in uh in fourth place alu you no! had a terrible a terrible final week no you went you went two and six so you oh, ended up 40, job. you ended up 46 and 45 above 500 i'll take that okay hey there look, definitely it's... wasn't a week where we all went perfect by accident that inflated those numbers that didn't happen sam then at 48 and 43 Ryan had a better week than I did, but only by one game. Ryan ends 52 and 39, and I end 53 and 38. That's wow. crazy that in a whole season, it came down to one, one. stupid pick that one of us I know. made. That's one crazy. Great job. Great job. Um, I, I think it's clear, like, I'm making these lines out of my ass and I have no distinct advantage because I haven't – I didn't win last year and I'm not winning this year. So, yeah, also pretty telling that Alu won last year and then came in last and then I was last last year and I came in first. So, wow. I think none I, of us I, know well, a thing. <laughs> that said, though, I I think that, um like, I was not that far above 500 – last year and i won the whole thing i'm I in think... last and i'm still above 500 so i don't think i got that much worse like point. i think my my first week tanked me i had a really bad week one but if if i went 500 week one or whatever it was like Guys. i still would have been even higher in the mix but like i think that's just to say it is like as a group i think we got a little bit better which I mean, cool. these numbers, I, I don't want to, like, these numbers were inflated by the week that Daniel went 0-6. You need and to stop and we went, like, talking and right now. Got it, Shut got it, got it. Shut the fuck up. But still, I, even year, still, like, you, last, last year was year. terrible. Last yeah. year, the final standings were uh, a, a. Lou, 61 and 50. Sam, 56 and 55. Me at 53 and 58, Ryan at 52 and 59. That can't be right. That must not be the final standings. No, I think that sounds right. And and um uh, Sam I got came in last. Sam got second with one game above 500. I'm one game oh, above 500. Hold on. That was that was going into the final week. I'm sorry. Oh the okay, real okay. final standings were Andrew 66 and 59, Sam 62 and 63. Ryan 60 and 65, and then me 59 and 66. Uh, so we literally that, just flipped the rankings, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we did exactly that. That's wild. 
<laughs> that's good for parody though that's good that's good for us yeah we're we're, we're literally just the ufa this season <laughs> but that okay so th- that that kind of like even furthers my point of like Sam was one game under 500 last year and that got him second place. I was one game over 500 this year and I'm last. Yeah. So I mean, at least, at least we're not Dan yacht. He went from 28 and 16, only 38 picks out of first place to two and 18, 51 games out of first place. That's That's brutal. That's That's terrible. Should we mail him like a last place uh, trophy? (laughs) We should make a chart that shows his decline in mm-hmm. picks behind us. <laughs> it's like per week on a weekly basis. <laughs> Joe, last please, year, please last visualize year, this da- data. Last year, worst, worst place was Everest. With one, he went 1-0. and oh. Only <laughs> one correct pick. <laughs> wow, terrible. What he a was loser. 65 games out of first place. <laughs> you know what they say the best ability is availability <laughs> that's a great point i also have yep. a note here that the hosts went uh 222 and 222 last year wow and we we had a winning record this year yeah everybody everybody was over 500 i wonder why cut that cut that cut that um you know what that just says ryan's lines Good lines, lines, lines baby. Lines, lines, baby. Um, no, I think the thing about what makes Ryan's lines easy is like, it's not that hard to like put like two and a half, or three and a half, one and a half on a game and just be like, I don't fucking know. Like, yeah, it's yeah. not hard when you when you make every single game a pick them. Bro, I don't think I had one week where I had more than one pick them. DC Boston was a pick them. Are you kidding me? What do you think the line should have been? DC minus 50. They fucking split games this year. Like, didn't the game end up being a one-point game? Like, get off my dick. Come on. This this game, this was a two-point game. Two-point game. Okay, so I should have said one and a half. Yeah. Or I guess I I should have said said two and a half and then had Boston cover. No, at least you, at the very least, you should have done a half. You should have, you should have. Half half is a pick. A half is a pick them. It doesn't matter. You still are picking a favorite. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. But like that, that looks, that's so stupid. Like that you're, you're picking a favorite, but okay. In actual sports betting, if you have half a point on a game, it's not a favorite. The lines are, the, you know what I mean? It's the same as, as a money line. Um, If it was two and a half, would you still pick DC? Oh, I, uh, no, I would have known it was going to be a two point game. So I would have picked Boston. <laughs> I honestly uh, have no idea. I have no idea. You're what so I smart, had. Joe. <laughs> yeah. I, I looking back, I probably should have gave DC an edge and said one and a half. You know, but it is what it is. It wouldn't have changed the lot. Like everyone. Hey, why are we it. rehashing this? Ryan's lines are perfect every time. That's true. Ryan's lines, baby. Is, they're the very fuck good. Up. They're very good. <laughs> I do hate when like, like Cam Brock or somebody like posts on Twitter. It's like, or no, it's it's Ruffner. Ruffner it's like Ruffner. sees a, a pick him and he's like powered. I'm like it's a it's a fuck it's a good it's an even game. Like all right. What? Yeah. Okay. Hold on. If we're gonna if well, we're it wasn't it wasn't Ruffner. it didn't end in a tie, Ryan. It didn't end in a tie. Well, I I, I got some of the if we're gonna talk about rough nerd here, if if I may digress. The the, the yes. actually the the one other thing that I wanted to bring up on this episode was um watching the end of Atlanta Carolina. And watching um, Carolina run the clock out, it is yeah. just—it's just too easy to run the clock out in this league. How I mean, how how many minutes did they have possession of the disc? It was like two minutes. I think it was four. Was it four minutes? The clock was definitely over three. Yeah, that's crazy. Like that just shouldn't. They, they worked it all the way up to work it all the way back. Right, and like you'd think that um, like basketball has a backcourt violation. And, and that's like, clock. and a shot clock. And that's like a harder, like that's a smaller space. But like, we're talking about like a much bigger um, field. It's so much easier to maintain possession if you can just go back as far as you want and then go back forward and swing it. It's almost like you're suddenly swinging it across the field again at that point. Like if you're not trying to advance the disc, if that doesn't matter anymore, like it's just way too easy. It's way too easy. And, um, 
the end of the game was like such a bummer because um it was like well okay well they just need to fucking dunk it backwards and the, the game was over like it was a foregone conclusion and um i got to twitter in that moment and i was like what ha like it just made me remember i was like okay wait hold on we had the backcourt violation in the all-star game two years ago yeah and we implemented other we implemented the pull rule and we were all talking about how that's gonna be so much better but like i think objectively like the backcourt is a better like that affects the game more and i think it solves more problems than the pull even did um I think so too and we just and we just forgot about it, and and then and then it just made me remember watching this like uh, it, conclusion of that otherwise awesome game end in such a boring like uninteresting way. Kind of that's kind of frustrating. Like we need we need a backcourt rule. I don't know exactly how it is. I, I don't think it needs to even be like at midfield. It could be like further back. But like like let's figure that out because I don't think Carolina or just any team like I think make it harder for the team. It's like, okay, yeah, like you're trying to run the clock out. Make that harder. Make them like work for it a little bit more. Make them yeah. want to score instead of dunk it backwards. Like have the incentive be like always to try to score or, or yeah. whatever it is. Um, yeah. I mean, I pulled the thread up here and I think Sasha kind of like sums it up pretty, pretty well. It yeah. Thrilling. <laughs> it was but not it thrilling. Was, it's it interesting to see. Impressive, this. but it, it like I wasn't thrilled by it. Yeah. It's it interesting to see the, the discourse yeah. here. Like even, you know, Steve Hall is talking about it. He's like, his quote's kind of interesting. Like Carolina used the rules to their advantage. Carolina's not at fault here, but like he's saying like, we should do better. We should, oh, yes. we should do better. Steve Hall, who had the power to implement that. That's Jesus. crazy. That Steve, that is actually kind of wild that like, Yes, like that is that is the that is the take. It's like yes, of course, of course, they, of course, Carolina did. They did what they needed to do. Yeah. Like no they, they won the no game. Like that was the optimal. Carolina. No, no, no one is like yeah. They they did what was optimal and what was optimal in that moment and the most exciting part of the game and the end game was like not a great product as like a viewing experience to watch them just kind of like dunk it backwards. And like, the, the, there's just no, yeah, it was like, it. It, it. It seems like double teaming doesn't really work when that you're not like, when you don't know the direct, like they can think you're going to go upfield or they can go downfield. Like double team doesn't really work there. If you know, they're going upfield or they're going to try to swing it to the middle of the field, like a double team works great. You're going to make them do a really silly throw, but like, even in this case, if you're double teaming, you're just leaving somebody open like way back. And if you go and try to stop them from throwing it backwards, now they can just swing it to the middle of the field to somebody open. Like it's just impossible to stop a throw from happening if the throw can go anywhere on the field. Yeah. I look, and I, I don't think it I don't think it needs to be like I I, I think if it was um like once you pass the first, I think maybe like the third um is kind of mm -hmm. a good sweet spot I, i'm not totally sure but like i think for the majority of the game that wouldn't really come into play like you kind of get it up there quickly anyway but then if you're going backwards suddenly that like line is kind of you know like I don't, I don't think it should be midfield but um like you just can't go backwards forever basically um but yeah they they need to implement that i hope that um i like to think that me tweeting that and then sasha quote tweeting it will change the rule if that happens like look so i got other ideas like, i got ideas i i like i like games i like um you know thinking about stuff like that i got you know let do you do you guys remember at the end of last year it was like they had some kind of summit where they like met and like mm -hmm. changed the rules or something and it was like come on man just let us be in the room for that like we got we could um you know i feel like, like let us cook let us cook I think a 90 second shot clock kind of just like works. I think that could work too. Like shot clock per, could pos work. Per, I'm not per possession with that per possession. Yeah. I'm, I could go either way on that. I, I like, why don't you like it? I mean, I'm just, like, I'm not attached to it. I'm just curious. Like what I think it makes zones like too good. Like I, I think, I think you should just, mm. I don't want to, I don't want to change the game too much, you know? So, with that said, though, we don't see zone be effective in this offense. So would that be an interesting way to bring zone into the UFA? 
Mm, that's kind of that's a good point. But that's interesting. I, that's a good point. I don't think zones that fun. Like I think for like a frisbee uh, like aficionado, saying. yeah, I don't think it's like a good. I don't mm-hmm. think like pitching like hey this good zone offense like that's not a that's a tough sell to someone who's like doesn't know that much about frisbee. Yeah, like, I think frisbee it's heads I think would like it, but. I think it'd be interesting because with a shot clock, then you bring more jump balls into play. And that has got to be one of the most like end of quarter jump balls have got to be one of the most entertaining plays in, in the yeah, game. That's right what now. Pablo was talking about when he said he also didn't care if people got hurt, but I just feel like more mm-hmm. jump balls. It means more people are going to get hurt. Are people know. getting hurt on jump balls right now? I don't that's know. A good, that's a good counterpoint. I mean, my 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 thing was need just data analysis to to see to answer that question. Yeah, I think the shot point. clock, I think it 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 um it's another solution. I think it I think it affects the game a lot more and mm-hmm. affects the whole rest of the game, not even just like the end game. I think that like a simple um not that noticeable backcourt violation that Pretty much is just there to make sure that like an end game in this specific situation doesn't right. happen, like has a little bit less of an effect. I think it, it could be implemented tomorrow and the game would still be the same, except that, that specific corner case doesn't really come into play as much. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I'm I mean, open to a shot would have clock. Other, it would have other impacts, I think, but I think those would be really interesting be way less than a shot clock it would be less yeah. than a shot clock and and um but yeah anyway i think you'd see more pulls to like in and you have to keep it in bounds because if it rolls out of bounds before halfway i think it like gets bricked to the middle of the field but if you could have it land in bounds in that like halfway backcourt violation coffin corner like that would be a really good pull yeah, that's you true. can set up your whole defense. They have to sprint up. They can't go back at all. You could double team them there, knowing they can only really go to the side or up. But I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, like, I, like, I like the tra- I like my my idea for the traveling backcourt violation, where like the furthest up you move the disc, you can only go like 20, 25 yards back from that. However, yeah, far or something like that. Up. That'd be a little harder to to like enforce, for but. Sure. Um, I like that though. It, like if, if you can just in the- like, I like that in theory. I think that's, yeah, cool. I think it'd be um, super hard to have, but maybe you have like a ref, you add a ref to every game who just like does backcourt violations. They move up with the disc. They just stand 25 yards back from it. Yeah. I'm with that. Um, well, do we got do we got anything else? We kind of went on some crazy tangent in the back half here, but you know, I'm here for it. I have to piss like crazy right now. Um last night I was drunk at a bar and I was like, man, I wonder what's going on in this Salt Lake game. And I like pull my phone up and I see a like mixed text from you guys. I was like, let me just let me go to the UFA app real quick. And I see Salt uh Salt Lake Lost. And I was like, whoa! But I like had no one to tell because no one gives a shit. <laughs> Yeah, that's the life. Uh, I'm, I'm open. I'm open. <laughs> I'm open. Eat your veggies. I'm open. I'm open. Bob Oper. Okay, you your cat to say I'm open. Batman, say I'm open. <laughs> Batman. Batman. Batman, say you're open. Batman. Uh, he said something about living in the shadows. I don't know. <laughs> it would have been great if somehow we could get a clip where like all of us are silent and then your cat just goes. <laughs> Wait a minute, you got anything to say? I was molded by it. Bone from it. Oh, that's Bane. <laughs> that's not Batman. Do <laughs> 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 Where's the detonator? It's changing. Where is Rachel? Where's Rachel? Serious. R.I.P. Heath Ledger, man. R.I.P. Yeah, seriously. I'm open. If he was still with us, <laughs> should we do a movie pod? Yeah. Yeah. Should, should we watch like Revenge a movie of the book Sith? Club? Should we watch Revenge of the Sith right now? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sam, get on. 
<laughs> should we should we share the screen and keep the recording going and just watch all of Revenge of the Sith? And-